Good afternoon. Is this on? Yes, it's on. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Terry Bryan. Um, before we start, a little background on me, I suppose. Um, I've been a nurse since 1981, 30-odd years. I've had a very interesting career working for some very interesting people over the years. Um, but for one reason or another, I went to work at Winterbourne View um, as a charge nurse in, in August 2010. Um, I'd previously been a clinical nurse manager in a low-secure service in Bristol, um, people with autism. Um, and I wanted to get back to a more hands-on role whilst I looked for my next dream job, as it were. Winterbourne View was local. I lived close by. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, it was a large um, locked service, um, 24 beds. I was told at interview it was an assertive service. Um, but I saw a locked, chaotic place, noisy with alarms. Um, there was no direction or meaningful occupation for anybody who lived there. People were herded together in groups. Um, there was absolutely nothing personalised about this situation at all. Um, there were number, a number of reasons for that, which we haven't got time to go into here. But I started to see people being teased and shouted at and threatened and ignored and neglected. Um, and it seemed to be routine. It seemed to be a daily occurrence. Um, and it seemed that nobody else was really saying anything about it. Um, colleagues of mine, a couple of colleagues of mine that had worked there previously, um, said they'd seen assaults um, by staff members on individuals, um, but they were unwilling at the time to speak up about it. Um, there was weak leadership from the nurses and the management, um, no guidance or planning. Um, I saw bad practices, basically, um, from the work workforce generally. Um, one instance stood out early on when I was asked to assist to restrain a young man who was getting angry on the phone, and I um, refused to, to help. The fellow that asked me to help him was the guy with the tattoos on the program. Um, because I, and because I wouldn't help him, he was a kind of a ringleader, I think, and um, I was branded a do-gooder at that point, and they became careful around me. But other nurses saw it all, and they all became complicit in it, really. Um, there were nurses on every shift, and they saw it all. I was there for about three months and all. Um, so who knew what is the next thing, I think. Um, I wrote an email. That's all I did. I wrote an email. Um, who would have known what happened? But I wrote this email to the manager. Um, I'd taken a lot of um, detail. It was a very detailed four-page email around um, attitudes, bad practices, what I saw. Some examples of, um, I was able to name people on certain times and certain dates of what they did, and I expected something to be done. But it was ignored, um, so I, I waited about two weeks, I had nothing back, um, so I wrote to his manager. His manager also ignored me. Followed protocol, I followed my union, um, contacted my union, rather, and they agreed that I should contact the CQC at that point because somebody in the RCN said they'd heard of Winterbourne View and left it hanging at that. Um, so I used the CQC web form saying I've seen abuse at Winterbourne View and expected, and waited and expecting to hear something back, which I didn't. Over the next two months, I sent another um, email and eventually it got to the point where um, I, I became exasperated, really. Hard to know what to do. Nobody seemed to be wanting to listen to me. Now, I'm not some na naive individualist who's misunderstood what he's seen here or anything. Um, so I was generally outraged at the things I was looking at. Um, I decided to contact the media at that point. Um, we agreed to call, phone the CQC one last time to see um, whether they actually received my allegation or not, and they had. The person was on holiday. Um, so at that point, I think we decided to make the program. Um, the public's really got no idea what goes on in places like Winterbourne View. It's not alone. Um, it's not unique in being a closed society. Um, but friends and relatives don't go into the unit. They go into a little side room. So they don't see what happens behind um, the doors to their relatives. Um, my initial actions were just to sort out attitudes and practices that I was witnessing, really. Um, subsequently, obviously, it's opened up this closed environment to some more scrutiny, I think. Um, I think some of the things to remember, the public only saw Panorama, for the, Im the images on Panorama for an hour. You know, I'd seen it for three months, some of the, some of the stuff, the bad practices and things. But the people living there had lived with it for three or four years, some of them, yeah. So it's things like that that really need sorting out, I think. How did it happen? There were some fundamental issues for me. Um, recruitment side of things, um, many of the support workers were obviously volatile people. 
and obviously shouldn't have been ever employed in this care setting or any other. That is a given, I think, from their behaviour we, we actually saw on film. But as they were so poorly supervised themselves, their attitudes and behaviours were allowed to escalate and develop to a truly shocking degree. Um, so they had nobody telling them that it was wrong. Um, but the people that should have been telling them, the managers, the nurses, they were having no support. They were poorly supervised by their managers, middle management of Castlebeck. Castlebeck training, very poor in my opinion. There was no supervision. There was no clinical supervision for the nurses. There was no performance management, and there was no reflective practice. All good clinical tools. Therefore, the poor staff retention. People left to do other things. They weren't valued. New people came in. They were assimilated into a negative culture. And on it went. 